As one might expect, um, in the last few months, we've received a decent amount of questions surrounding uh, COVID-19, the vaccine, and how it plays into the end times, the mark of the beast. We've had three videos so far uh, pertaining to these things. The first one that I did was called, How Serious is COVID-19? That was followed up by, How Should We Understand the Mark of the Beast? And then to answer two or three questions in one, we did a video called, Does Virus Plus Vaccine Plus Microchip Equal Mark of the Beast? Now the questions continue to roll in concerning uh, this topic. This video, I'm going to try to broaden my perspective a little bit. This is something I've talked about in church. Uh, we've done entire series on prophetical events. We've taken weeks to cover all of the information. I'm going to try to condense it into a short video now and just answer the question, are we in the end times? Now let me specify what I mean by end times. Are we in Daniel's 70th week? This is what a lot of people would refer to as the tribulation time. Are we seeing those things uh, take place right now? And there are several things that you have to factor in, much more than just a vaccine that could be the mark of the beast. Several different prophecies need to be fulfilled before we could definitively say that we are in that end time tribulation situation. So first of all, the temple needs to be rebuilt. Matthew 24, verse 15, Jesus speaks about the temple standing. Paul, in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 4, refers to the temple standing, and the Antichrist will go into it and call himself God. And then in Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, you read about the temple standing. As it is today, the temple is not standing in Jerusalem. However, from what I've been told and what I've heard and read, there are plans for the temple to stand again soon. So that's something that could take place in the very near future. Number two, there is going to be a peace treaty in the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East seems like an impossibility. However, there are, I've actually read reports recently of negotiations and talks taking place in that region, and they are trying to work something out. Who knows what might come of it? I'm sure people have tried in the past and failed. But we read in Daniel 9, verse 27, that the Antichrist is going to confirm the covenant uh, for a week. And the week there in Daniel 9, when you consider it in a prophetic context, it, uh, it represents seven years. That peace treaty has not been realized yet. Could it happen any day? Absolutely. I think it's possible, but we haven't seen it come to pass yet. Uh, number three, we would have to see not only peace in the Middle East, but that would lead to a worldwide peace. Uh, this all goes together with the establishment of a new world order, or you could call it a one world government. That is a biblical thing. In Daniel chapter 7 and verse number 23, we read, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. Now there are four beasts mentioned in Daniel chapter 7, and they, they correlate to four kings and or four kingdoms. The king and the kingdom go together in each case. So you have Babylon, followed by Media Persia, followed by Greece, followed by Rome. And Rome, of course, as an empire fell hundreds of years ago, but one day that Roman empire is going to, let's say, be reestablished. This is why a lot of uh, theologians and Bible teachers, they refer to the end time kingdom of the Antichrist as a revived Roman Empire. It will have that, the same characteristics as that Roman Empire did of the past. And it says in, in the verse I just read, it will devour the whole earth. So it's going to be a one world government. Uh, in verse 24, we read more detail about that. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Now, this little horn that rises up and overtakes three other horns or three other kings, that little horn is the Antichrist. So the one world government will be led by a 
ten king federation, right? They'll be in control of this one world government. And the Antichrist, as he rises through the political ranks, he will overtake three of those kings, and eventually he works his way to the very top of that political system, and he is in control of the entire one world government. We have not seen that happen yet. Could it happen in the very near future? Absolutely. It could, but we're not seeing it yet. Another thing we would expect to see in Daniel's 70th week are the events that are mentioned in the book of Revelation. And I'm going to focus in on the seals that are talked about in chapter 6. The first seal is opened and a white horse comes out with his rider and world peace is established. And then the next horse comes out in the second seal, a red horse and his rider. They take peace from the earth, which shows us that peace was established. And, and a great sword affects the entire earth, which I, I believe what we're reading about with that red horse is what we would probably call World War III. And a weapon of mass destruction is unleashed. And obviously, the, the, the population of the world will be grossly affected by this. That leads to the next horse, the black horse and his rider, the third seal, a worldwide famine. I think it's the natural result or consequence of the previous uh, seal. And then the fourth, I think ties right into it. You have death and hell riding on a pale horse. And this is, there's going to be death all, just all over the place. And this refers to people, multitudes of people dying from various reasons, from the famine, from the war, uh, from pestilence, from earthquakes in diverse places, from wild animals. Even animals I, I think that people wouldn't expect to be harmful are going to be extremely dangerous at that time. Everything in nature is just going to be a bit, a bit uh, off because of what's going on. And the next thing you read about is the fifth seal, a worldwide persecution takes place. Uh, believers in Christ all over the globe are going to be uh, hunted and killed. Now, persecution is a very real thing, and it is taking place today, but not on the worldwide scale that you read about in Revelation 6. Could it happen soon? Sure, sure it could, but we're not seeing that prophecy fulfilled yet. Uh, that, that persecution runs until the very end of that tribulation time, which is the sixth seal and Jesus comes back. So that's Revelation chapter 6 in a nutshell. Now we haven't seen any of these seals open. We haven't seen those prophecies fulfilled. I think it's fair to say that it could happen any day. The world is ripe and ready for those type of things to take place, but we haven't seen it happen yet. Another thing that has to happen, Paul said, before our gathering together unto Christ, which is a reference to, to the, what we call the rapture, uh, the man of sin needs to be revealed. There'll be a great falling away, an apostasy, and I believe that apostasy is directly related to the Antichrist. That there will be people, even some believers, that are tricked by this man of sin, and they will think that he is a great guy and, and uh, meaning well and trying to do well and probably gain a following even amongst certain uh, professing Christians, I think is the safest way to say it. But that man of sin, the son of perdition, needs to be revealed. That's in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4. Now, I think there's a number of ways that he could be revealed. You could watch him uh, work his way through the political system and match it to what you read in Daniel. I think that's most likely how we will first recognize who the man of sin or the Antichrist is. But at the very least, seeing him assassinated and rise again would definitely tell you who the beast or the Antichrist is. But even after his assassination and subsequent resurrection, then there's the coming of the false prophet. You read about this in Revelation chapter 13. He does great miracles. He causes the whole world to worship the beast. And then he has an image made and brings this image to life. And that image begins to speak and teach. And then you read about the mark of the beast being forced on the people. It's either his mark, his number, or his name uh, that the people have to take. And without that, they can't buy or sell. Now, we haven't seen any of that happen as of yet. But I will say this, when you look at all of the evidence, everything that's been released about this, uh, this response to COVID-19, I understand why people would say that it fits the description 
of Revelation 13. I, I do. I understand. I believe that that entire system that they're setting up, I, I think there's something sinister, nefarious, evil about it. I do. Now, whether or not it is the mark of the beast, as I've said before, I think we need all of the other prophecies that I've mentioned in this video. All of that would have to already be in motion and be happening. Then we would know that that vaccine and the mark and everything connected to it is part of the beast and his plan. Uh, at the very least, at the very least, what they're doing now is paving the way for what the Antichrist will one day do. Now, there's one other thing that I think we need to take into consideration, and that is the biblical reality, the fact that one day Jesus will come and catch his bride away. If the term rapture doesn't sit well with you because it's not in the Bible, uh, then maybe you'll accept the term, our gathering together unto him, which is a biblical phrase, right? 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. Call it what you will. I think the word rapture is perfectly fine. Uh, by the way, the word Bible is not in the Bible, and yet we call it that. It is, it's an acceptable description of what the event is. Uh, I realize that there is discussion about the timing of the rapture, is it going to happen before the seven years? We call that a pre-tribulation rapture. Is it going to happen in the middle of Daniel's 70th week, which they call a mid-trib rapture? Uh, there are those that think it happens at the, almost the same time as the second coming, when Jesus is coming down for the Battle of Armageddon. I, I don't think that there's much in the way of biblical proof for that. But regardless of the timing of the rapture, the Apostle Paul made it very clear that event, the glorious appearing of, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is our blessed hope. That is what we are looking forward to. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, our conversation is in heaven from whence we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change this vile body and fashion it like unto His glorious body. We are looking forward to that. That He, not even that, but He should be our focus in this time. I don't think it's wrong to be clued in about what's going on around us. We should be able to discern the signs of the time. But our primary focus and the one who should have the preeminence in everything we do is the Lord Jesus Christ. So rather than getting worked up about the Antichrist, I think you would do far better to keep your attention and your affection set on things above. As Jesus said, lift up your eyes, for your redemption draws nigh. Jesus is coming, and if your soul has already been redeemed by you putting faith in His blood, in His sacrifice on the cross, then when He comes, He redeems your body. Romans chapter 8 and verse 23 describes the redemption of our body. This physical body gets changed, we get a new body, and we fly away and meet the Lord in the air. Uh, so that, that is one event that hasn't taken place yet. I think above any of these things that I've mentioned, that is what we should be looking forward to. So I hope this helps explain a little bit about the end times. I don't think we're in the tribulation time. I don't think we're seeing all those prophecies happen, but they could happen any day. And Lord willing, today, before this day is over, might we hear the trumpet sound and see the Lord face to face. If this video has helped, you can click the like button. If you'd like to follow along with our Bible Q&A blog, you can click subscribe. Feel free to leave a Bible question in the comment section below or visit us on our Facebook page, Bible Baptist Church of Pachestruam. And if you live in town, we'd like to invite you to one of our services, and we hope to see you soon. May God bless and have a great day further.